and I'm, I'm standing here with Owen Torres, who's going to give us a bit of a, a rundown of what's been happening so far. Uh, so far, all they've been talking about is the regional dialogue, dialogues in the uh, meeting. Um, I'm waiting for the end of it so that we can hopefully answer some questions, get them to answer some questions that we've got, uh, especially the legal questions that I've um, posed to the council itself, which is um, 26 legal questions about the uh, validity of the government and the constitution itself and what they've done. Um, as, as a sovereign man of my people, um, Wakia people, I've got the right to talk for my family and bosses, they've given me that right and as far as we're concerned, recognition while, while being recognised. We're already here, we've been here for since the beginning of time as far as we're concerned and here we have these people saying to us, oh, you need to be recognised in a constitution that does is, is only for British subjects, it's not for us. And as you know, Viv, I've, I've, Vivian, sorry, I, I've given you information in, in regards to that. I'm not going to go into it right now, yep. um, but we'll see how we go in the meeting and see how we can um, change a few views in there. And how do you feel about um the, you know, the really the strict privacy that they've got going on here today. Do you think it's trans transparent, this meeting? Well, no. Um, I find that interesting that they're saying it's confidential, especially when it's dealing with all tribal people on this, on this continent. We, we should all know what's going on. It should be open and transparent to everyone, and it should be, you know, all our comments should be given out to the people so that they can see. Um, one of the things I find is... People are saying, well, we're making decisions for other tribal mob, but I've always had the belief that I'm only doing it for my people, and I've always stated that in meetings, that I cannot talk for anyone else's country. So it's, it's, I, I truly believe it should be passed out to all tribal people in Australia so that they know what's going on, because a lot of the desert mob and you know, community mob don't even know what's going on here. They don't even know about this recognition stuff. And, these, and they're, they're saying that we need to make decisions here. No, I don't think so. I, I don't think that's a fair thing with our people, especially when it comes to our tribal law. You can only talk for your own country. You cannot talk for anyone else's country. And I've always made that clear in every meeting I've been to. Thanks, Owen. No can worries. We do, we do have um, interpreters inside. Okay. And it's, it's not a criticism of our interpreters. They do a really good job. But I don't think they understand how to break it down really well for our people to understand, because it's really hard to ch um, translate from the English meanings mm. to our tribal meanings, because most of our words have only got one meaning. So th there's the difference. So yeah, it, it is being translated for those who need translation, but I, I can't see how they can do it for all tribes. In the big picture, do you see this constitution surviving or do you see a new well, one coming well, into place? Well, the constitution, they never took care of it, for a starter. Um, 1919, when the League of Nations gave them independent status, they effectively became a foreign nation to the Commonwealth laws. So that was proven in 1999 with Sue Verse Hill, uh, where she had dual citizenship. Uh, was elected into Parliament and they took her to court and said, no, you've, you've sworn an oath to a foreign power, which is the um, Crown. So I find it interesting that they talk about being part of the Commonwealth, yet in their courts they call it a foreign power. So who's, who's right at the end of the day? Um, I feel that there's a lot of fraudulent action going on here and deceptive uh, uh, information being given out to our people and we're not getting full disclosure. Now the government knows they must give us full disclosure when we've asked the question and like I said I've asked 26 legal questions about the validity of the constitution itself and the government itself and we still have not received an answer from them. In other words they've acquiesced by silence. Yeah, and can, do you understand why they are so desperate to get yes. Can you explain that to people? Because well, the Australian government effectively has no legal standing on this continent. And the reason why they don't have legal standing is because they've never had the consent from us. So we have no treaties, we have no consent, and we have no agreements with anyone in the world. We're the only people who have no agreements. But we're being treated, and I'll make this quite, I've made this quite clear to people like Richard D. Natal and others, 
that we are just political slaves on our own lands, our own sovereign lands, for their profits while leaving us displaced and destitute? And should we be seeking asylum in a foreign embassy? And do you think um, this process is their really last chance to knock out the sovereignty movement? This is, this is uh, yeah, I, I truly believe that what the, the government's doing is um, misleading the Australian people about their legitimacy on this continent mm -hmm. and their um, rule of law. Now, my understanding of the constitution and how it works, the Australian government is a foreign power to that and they fall under sections 42, which gives us um, who they must swear an oath to, to go into parliament and they're, they're not swearing the correct oath which was proven in um, Tasmania with the judges when they found that they hadn't sworn the correct oath for 30 years. Uh, that's well documented and you can look that up in the Tassie papers if you like. Now, with the constitution, the government doesn't have the authority to change it because the Commonwealth of Australia Act, 19, uh, 1900 UK, and Letters Patent 1900 UK, are acts of the UK Parliament. Now that's quite clearly stated in the um, stat, uh, Commonwealth Statutory Rules Book 1901 to 1956 where Orders 158 quite clearly states what an act is and also in the Australian High Court Rules which I've just recently got a document of and I can point that out and it's the exact same thing. Um, what an act is, it's a, a, an act is an act of the UK Parliament which is Orders 158.